Hey guys, what's up? It's Kelly again, and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be joined once again by my doppelganger to talk to you guys about different German loan words that Americans have adopted from the German language, and yet we use these words to mean something entirely different from their original German meaning. So the etymology of all of the words I'm going to talk about in this video is in fact German. And the first word is my personal favorite, which is schmuck. So when I first moved to Germany, I kept seeing the word schmuck written on signs outside of certain businesses, and I just assumed it was the business owner's last name, and that it was a common last name, and a very unfortunate last name, because in the US, we use the word schmuck as a derogatory term to refer to someone who's a jerk, or otherwise just obnoxious. But lo and behold, all of these signs were posted outside of jewelry stores because in German, schmuck means jewelry. Hey, Kel, did you use up all the toilet paper again? Kel, did you use all of the toilet paper? Okay, I do not sound like that. Yeah, you sound just like that. <sighs> Don't be such a schmuck. The next word is spiel. In German, spiel primarily means game, as in a game you play. But in the US, we use the word spiel to describe a sort of long-winded but yet quickly spoken speech or pitch that's especially meant to convince someone to do something. The interesting thing about this particular loan word is that unlike most others, we retained the original German pronunciation and spelling. Even though in English, when you see the letters SP together, the S is pronounced as a hard S, as in speech, as opposed to the German sh sound, as in spiel. Hey, so I know we're trying to save money, but there's this extended DVD collection of Tiger King with all the behind the scenes footage, and it's only. Yeah, Cal, I don't need to hear your whole spiel, okay? I'll buy it with you. But only if you promise to stop playing Joe Exotic's music without headphones on, especially in the morning. Thank you. The third word is schmoozen. Schmoozen in German means to cuddle. In the US, we cut off the ending and we change the spelling a little bit to make the word schmooze, which means to talk informally with someone, particularly in a persuasive manner, in order to gain a favor, business, or a connection. Hey, how are you today? Feeling good? You look great, by the way. I just, I had to tell you. And that braid, wow. So cute with that hair. Are, are you schmoozing with me right now? Look, I know we live in DC and schmoozing is just a normal part of life here, but this apartment is supposed to be a safe haven away from all of that. <sighs> okay, fine. We're out of laundry detergent. Seriously? First the toilet paper and now the laundry detergent? <laughs> I just stocked up last weekend. I have a lot of laundry. A lot of laundry? You literally wear nothing but sweatpants except when you have to film a YouTube video. Okay, you don't need to call me out like that. The fourth word is krank. Krank in German means ill or sick, which is why a hospital is called a krankenhaus. But in the US, we use the word crank, which is obviously pronounced a little differently and has a C instead of a K in the beginning. And it's used to describe someone who's just bad tempered. And we use the word cranky to describe someone who's irritable or in a really bad mood. Hey, Cal, do you really need to eat that loudly? Okay, okay, you don't need to be so cranky about it. The next word is blitz. Blitz in German means lightning, and while we have a couple different uses for the word blitz in the US, it's often used as a synonym for drunk, as in very, very drunk. Hey, remember that time you got totally blitzed off of White Claws and tried to convince everyone you could do a guess? Yes, I remember, okay? But why are you bringing this up right now? I found a photo. Delete it. The sixth word is Stück. In German, Stück means peace. In the US, we've taken the German word Stück and modified it to Stück, which means something that you're really well known for doing or a gimmick done to draw attention to yourself. I cannot believe I thought I could do a backflip off of a table. Yeah, that seems to be your Stück when you drink. 
The seventh word is schnauze, which in German means mustache, but in the US we use schnauzer as a funny word for nose. <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> Kelly. Oh my god. What? Why did you wake me up? You were snoring really loudly. <laughs> it's a serious medical condition. You know I can't help it. Yeah, well, maybe you wouldn't snore so much if you didn't have such a big schnauzer. What did you say? Nothing. The eighth word is klotz. Klotz in German means wooden block. In the US, we replaced the O with a U to pronounce it klutz, and it means an awkward or clumsy person. What, what is this? What are you doing on the ground? What does it look like I'm doing? I'm working out. That's working out. Oh my God, you are such a klutz. The ninth word is Stein. Stein in German means stone, but Americans think that the German word Stein means earthenware beer mug. So they'll call anything that looks like this, or even this, a Stein. Hey, have you seen my beer stein? Your what? My beer stein, you know, my really big beer glass. Kelly, it's 10 in the morning. What do you need your beer stein for? Well, I'll tell you what I don't need, and that's your judgment. The tenth word is verklempt. Verklempt in German means uptight or inhibited, but in the US it's spelled with a P and it means overcome or overwhelmed with emotion. <laughs> Why are you crying? Oh, come on. You know this gets me every time I see it. I just, I cannot believe that you are this verklempt over a Subaru commercial. The 11th word is schmaltz, which in German means lard or fat drippings. But in the US, we've added a T and it means excessive sentimentality, especially in movies and music. It's the schmaltz that gets me. They know what they're doing when they put that music into the puppy and it- Kelly, it's a commercial. And the last and final word is Heimlich. Heimlich in German means secretly or clandestine, but in the US, if you ever hear someone saying Heimlich, they're referring to the first aid technique, the Heimlich maneuver, which is used on choking victims and named after its inventor, Henry Heimlich. Of course, Germans will refer to the Heimlich maneuver as well, but in the US, that is its exclusive use. Kelly, can you please try to eat like a normal person? I do not want to have to do the Heimlich because you decided to inhale your food. All right guys, those are all of the German loan words turned false friends that I have to share with you today. Thank you so much to the Goethe Institute London for sponsoring today's video. The Goethe Institute is the globally trusted institution for learning German language and culture, and they offer official German courses online, in person, and a blended mix of both. I had the absolute privilege of taking courses at the Goethe Institute last year as part of my journey of learning German and I really enjoyed the type of learning environment they provided and taking structured courses like what they offer at the Goethe Institute also helped to hold me accountable for studying German. If you're interested in learning German or more about German culture, you know, beyond all of the fabulous information that I include in all of my videos, then make sure you check out the link to the Goethe Institute London that I will provide in the description box below this video. All right guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did, let me know by giving it a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's free and it helps me out a lot. If you're not following me on Instagram yet, look me up at Kelly Does Her Thing. I'm always posting different videos and stories on there. I am super active on Instagram. Thank you so much to all of my patrons for the support you've given me and I will see you guys next time. Bye!